Hey there, it's Ryan, and today we are going to be painting a nice, finely detailed, real-time landscape with acrylic paints. And before we begin, I will run you through our materials. I will be personally working with pigments from Windsor and Newton with my brush set. It is a five-piece brush set, and I use it for all the lessons here on the channel. With that, I will be working on an 8 by 10 inch canvas. I have a small dish of water and some paper towel to wipe off all of my excess water and pigment. Now, if you're looking at the image and you're thinking, oh no, I'm not, not great at drawing. Don't worry, I also have the traceable up over on Patreon, so you will get the perspective, the sizing, the details, all of that just right. And up there you can also get things like the reference photos, bonus lessons, we do art critiques, and you can also get my ebooks, which include acrylics for beginners. So if you're interested, check it out, but those are the materials and we are about to get started. We're going to begin here today with a one inch flat headed brush and we'll dip the bottom third of it into a little bit of water then proceed to wipe off the excess. This will just help us blend for a little bit longer. From there, we'll grab an abundance of titanium white, a little bit of our cerulean blue and a hint of our Mars black. We're going to mix up two pigments right now. One is going to be a mid grayish blue, something for the open sky in our painting and then we're going to mix up a second color right under it and this one's going to be quite a bit darker this is going to be for the clouds and we're going to do both of these at the same time so that we can apply them and blend them without having to worry about one drying while we mix the other so we're going to mix an abundance of paint here for both of them Make sure that they have a good amount of blue in there. And the beauty of working on both of them at the same time is that we get to see what they'll look like right beside each other. So, let's jump into the painting. I'll start by taking my brighter pigment and just lining the top of the sky with that. The larger flat-headed brush is great in these scenarios because it really lets us cover a great deal of space quickly and I'm going to paint this in between some of our clouds around our buildings and I'll put some extra paint on the top and bottom of the open sky this will just give us some paint to blend with when we start to fill in the clouds and I think we'll also do an opening right down here, like so. We want a good amount of paint on the canvas. Acrylics are pretty thin. And the more paint we add, the more completed a look. So, once we apply that, I'll just thin it out by moving my brush over it very softly. Take out all of those extra brush strokes. Then we'll go to the darker pigment. And I'm going to start by applying that at the bottom actually, like so, just because this will be the darkest area. I don't want to dilute this pigment with any of the brighter pigment that we have above it that we'll be blending into. And then I'll just softly work one into the other because they're both still wet. It should be fairly smooth, but still distinct enough. Now we'll grab a bit more of that paint, head back up, work in between those open areas of sky and softly playfully work it on the top and bottom. I'll do a bit more of a blend towards the top than I will the bottom though and that's just because perspective will make the bottom of the cloud look a little bit sharper and the top will almost float and dissipate into the sky something that's certainly less opaque as a whole. See that? I'm going to grab a bit more water, make my brush nice and damp. That'll just help me continue this process with ease. We don't want too much water, otherwise we thin the paint to the point where 
we don't have a proper application. So it's one of those things where you just learn in time how much to add. It becomes intuitive. But with that, we're definitely getting there. This strand isn't going to go all the way across the sky. Not fully. We'll let it dissipate towards the left. Like so. Now we're going to get a little bit playful with it. I'm going to interject a hint more titanium white into our brighter mix. And I'm going to go to the bottom of the openings for our sky. And I'll just interject a bit of this extra light. Start to work my way up. It'll dissipate as we work our way up because we'll run out of paint and it'll also continue to blend with that which we have on the canvas. Like so. And now we're going to go back in with a damp brush and we'll do our blends from here. But this will give our sky a bit of a gradient and we'll make the bottom look slightly brighter. Sun's a bit lower at this point. And these blends are still easy because We've been using water, our paints are still somewhat wet, and so we're getting a good soft blend. Now we'll get a little bit closer and switch to our liner brush. This one's nice and tiny, great for detail work, and details are exactly what we're going to interject here. So I'm going to start by just, first of all, reworking that highlight into our open area, then we'll start to create some interesting openings in the bottoms of our clouds. So by just creating these little lines, you can see that it creates a separation between the cloud and the sky. We can also work this down, create those openings on the bottom. And these applications are very simply, very quickly, going to create much more complex shapes and it'll make our clouds more distinct because initially they were just bands that ran across the sky, right? But now we have all of these unique characteristics which will balance the highly detailed buildings we're about to render. So we're just creating little openings for that sky to be seen, as well as little divots throughout the base. We can go over and build these areas up a couple of times. especially if we're using a lot of water because it'll be semi-opaque. We want a lot of the highlights here to be fully opaque. So here you can see I'm going back in and it makes a world of difference. But really separating the clouds. We can do a little bit up here, but we have to be careful because it's a bit of a darker area. So I'm going in with a much more watery mixture, which will inherently make this look darker because we have more of that dark pigment showing through when it's watery. So now we're going to take a step back, make it a little bit brighter, our sky color, and I'm just going to do all of this one more time. And I'm doing that because acrylics are innately quite thin and often we'll get a much better result through multiple layers. So, I'm also going to be repainting in the darker clouds. This gives me an opportunity to ask myself what I really liked about the sky, what I don't, fix that which I don't, double down on that which I do. And one little change I wanted to make was just how bright the sky was. I wanted it to be a little bit more so. I didn't want it to be a daytime 
brightness, but I wanted it to be a little bit brighter. And I know that painting everything twice, sometimes three times in a lesson, can be something that takes a little bit more time than you probably want to spend. So, I'll tell you what, we'll just do a little bit of this together, and then I will complete the second layer myself, and then we'll jump into the next step. But here, I just want to show you how we're going back in, we're building the second layer, and just look at this in relation to the clouds right below it. It's so much better. And we're not doing anything different technique-wise. All that's changing is a little bit of our values and the fact that there's a second layer. And acrylics just look a lot better with more layers. So, again, I'll just quickly apply this same way as before, and we'll jump into the next step together. Okay, now I noted that I was just going to go ahead and do that next layer, but I wanted to show you that in the same way that we reinterjected the highlights with the liner brush, we can go in and we can reinterject clouds, big ones and small ones, with that same brush. Do a bit of a blend so that they have a soft edge. But this can be a really nice, subtle addition. You can also make portions of the clouds more opaque. Here we can have a little break off from this bottom portion. Clean up areas that were slightly less defined. And I'm not going to do too, too much of this, but I think it's one of those things that you can do a lot with using a very small amount of paint, small amount of time, and a small amount of effort. So we're just being a bit playful. And reworking this in. Okay, and now we're going to take a step back and we'll use our brush, flathead, the larger one, and we'll just work our way around a lot of these buildings using that very sharp head of it. You can see I'm using both vertical and horizontal lines. If you want to keep your drawing perfect, you can also mask it with painter's tape. That's an easy way of making sure that there aren't any inconsistencies. But I don't really mind redrawing the city, or small portions of it, rather. And for those of you who are looking at the city and you're thinking, oh no, it's uh, pretty complicated. Again, don't worry, the traceable is up over on Patreon, so you don't actually have to worry about the drawing process. You can just copy it with tracing paper or a mini projector, or you can use the gridded version to kind of freehand sketch it with the reference. There's a lot of different options if drawing isn't really your thing. But with that, I am just filling in these spots now. I like to get the edges first when I have a lot of water in my brush, because that's when we get the sharpest markings, and then once we have those down, I go and I make those larger applications. Let's move over onto the other side. So yet again, brush is nice and damp. We'll carefully work our way down. Move in between these buildings, which don't have to be perfect, but we want them to be fairly linear as we continue. Still want the essence of them. When we apply their paint, we can make the angles and the perspective all of that correct when we redraw them. But right now, fill this in, and I'm trying to do so with a 
good amount of paint because again, we don't want it to be thin. We can do a second layer. If we don't feel like it's thick enough and I am going to just take a little bit of our highlight and interject slight little bits of light which don't work their way all the way through the clouds but just give us that hint of a break between some of them. Not too tricky. Not too tricky at all. Now we'll have some fun with the buildings and I know a lot of us are going to feel inclined to work on the largest one first that is at the forefront, but we're actually going to work on a couple around it to give ourselves some practice and ensure that we are comfortable with what we're doing. So I'm going to grab a little bit of titanium white, good amount of Mars black using the larger flat headed brush. We'll interject a hint of our cerulean to make sure that it's nice and cool much like the rest of the piece. Atmospherically it'll fit. And then I'm going to take my pinky finger, I'm going to brace it on the canvas. And I'm going to work my way along the edges of the first building I want to work on. And in a lot of cases I don't make an elongated application. I go in and I make multiple taps. And I do this because often when we make a stroke, the brush tends to curve in one way or another. And by just going in with a tap, we're able to avoid that. Once I have the edges down, I'll start to work my way inwards carefully. I do apologize for my hand gets in the way. The angles will be unique at times. And it's also worth noting, occasionally we will go slightly outside of the drawn lines. It's okay, we'll just expand the building slightly and get that just right. It's also worth noting that we're not going to do the silhouettes for all of the buildings at the same time. Yes, it would save time, but it also can make things a little bit more confusing. And this way we and kind of set ourselves a little goals, accomplish them, feel good about it, and then proceed on to the following steps. Now I will paint the buildings much more quickly than this, but for the first one I figure again, we take our time, we get our bearings, and then we, then we really get into it. Now we're going to get you quite a bit closer. We're going to make a significantly brighter version of the pigment we were just working with. So you can see I'm just adding some titanium white to it. It's not a bright pigment, but it is brighter than that which we had. And then I'm going to interject some details, some markings which will make this building distinct from those which surround it. And with this one, it's essentially just a couple of vertical gray lines. They'll look quite subtle once we have other buildings in the surrounding area. You're probably going to have this innate desire to make all of these absolutely perfect. Line work without any issue at all. And I understand that and that resonates with me. However, we are painting very straight, architecturally perfect subjects with brushes, which are things that innately will have a bend and won't render the sharpest of lines. If you want absolutely the cleanest application, you could use a palette knife, but I really like the painterly effect that a brush gives. I, I like having those imperfections that are associated with paint and brushes. I think that adds a lot visually. I, I think it really romanticizes the medium and that which you create in a beautiful way. So I'm actually going to happily keep them. I'm not going to overly refine it. I'm not going to overly straighten. I'm going to have it be, again, what I would describe as painterly, because it's an aesthetic I really like. You can use painter's tape or rulers or, again, palette knives to get something that is incredibly sharp, but I think you can have 
a great painting regardless of that, and it really comes down to the style and what you want to achieve. Said, you've seen what this turns into, so I think you'll probably like it. And with that, we're going to take a step back and we'll add a couple little windows. Now for this, we're going to switch to our liner brush, and we have two new pigments. We have a Naples Yellow, and we have a Burnt Sienna. I'm going to combine the two of those, significantly more Naples Yellow than Burnt Sienna, but the Burnt Sienna is going to add some good warmth. Naples Yellow is a fairly opaque yellow, which is nice, and then we're also going to interject a hint of Titanium White. Our yellows and our light throughout this painting are going to differ. I'm going to change them here and there, but I like this as a starter. And I am looking at the reference photo to see where the windows are, but I'm also going to make changes in accordance to what I think will be aesthetically pleasing, but also just aid the piece as a whole compositionally. So as you can see, lots of little ones. You can have them beside each other or far apart. We can make our brush quite damp and get a much more dim light as well. But we don't want to add too many of these right now because it's easy to overdo it once we have more of the building. So let's get a bit closer and continue with that. So as noted, we're not going to do all of the buildings at once. We're going to compartmentalize a little bit and we are going back to the base layer that we did initially, or at least something akin to it with this building. The beauty of painting all of these different buildings is that there is room to change the values from building to building because there will be different materials, which they're constructed with, various amounts of glass and concrete, steel, but also they'll be receiving different amounts of light as well. So a myriad of factors is going to impact the value, which gives us the freedom to mix slightly different paints each time. Here you can see I'm Carefully cutting along the edges, trying to make them as sharp as I can. And we're not going to do all of the buildings. I'm just going to do what feels reasonable. The areas that I can render feel are fairly distinct without being overwhelmed by a greater area need to redraw. So we'll just fill this in. Much like anything else, if it looks thin, if you can see the canvas through it, do a second to third layer, and then we'll switch brushes and have some fun with the detail work. So now that we have our base, we're going to make some of these more distinct than others, and an easy way of going about that, switching to a smaller flat-headed brush making our darker base layer a little bit brighter with the addition of titanium white. And now we can start separating buildings. So the building right here is going to be a bit more of a lighter gray than that to the left and right of it. It's subtle, but that's what we're looking for. We can also use the same pigment in another building. I'm going to have one, just looking at my reference, over here. And that can come down quite a ways. Fairly unique with the slant on it. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a lot of unique traits in these little buildings. It'd be easy to do all of these vertical markings, but we want something that can capture the attention and sell the viewer more so on realism, despite the fact that we're doing a lot of simplification with the general aesthetics due to sizing. There are a lot of details in a city and you can only fit so many on a canvas. You have to be selective. You have to ask yourself what really 
identifies the building, what makes it distinct. And in a lot of cases, these markings on their own are going to look abstract. They're going to look like nothing intentionally in particular is being done, but that's the beauty of it, right? You make a lot of those abstract markings and eventually they build into something that just looks like a city. So I'm making a lot of unique movements in here. We'll continue what we had up here though. Looks like in the reference there's a bit of a break between them. It's starting to look interesting, right? We don't even have any lights going on in these areas yet. You can also make some of them a bit more blue. Blue is really the only color we're going to be working with, aside from the lights, which will also render fairly soon. And you can see I'm jumping around quite a bit. Doing multiple layers, changing some of the areas from gray to blue. And I don't want to overdo the detail, so for now I think I'm happy with that. We'll switch back to the liner. Render nice warm pigment. Start interjecting. various lights. What's interesting about these is that they're very different from what we have over there. They're a bit more uniform. They have a pattern. Up here it looks like we have more large office windows. Just like so. And we also have little lights at the tops of the building, the lights at the tops of these. There's a singular window that is light over here. It's fun. It's very exploratory when you go through the reference and you just kind of notice all of these different spots that are almost kind of funny. How, how in such a large building is there a singular light on, right? Having fun working through it. Okay. I like this. We have to be careful to not put too much light on the edges because we don't want to draw the viewer's attention there to too great of a degree. And now I'm adding areas that weren't in the photo but I think could be beneficial. And just like that, we have another good or small portion of the city. Okay, now we'll take a step back. We'll remix the darker hue that we used initially. And I'm going to use this to continue blocking in base layers for our buildings. And now we have a lot of detail going on here. A lot of finite sharp edges and perspective 
again, if you need help, the traceable is up over on Patreon. So you can get it just right. But we are simplifying the reference photo. And therefore, I am making alterations to the scene itself. And occasionally also to the traceable. I think everybody's piece is likely going to look a little bit different. It's not a bad thing. I know this is a tutorial, a lesson, the attempt to show you how I'm doing it, why I'm making the decisions I am. That said, it's still art. And with that comes a lot of leeway, an opportunity for individuality. And if you would like to take an artistic liberty, if you'd like to change up the buildings a little bit, by all means do so. Traceables and reference photos are great to get you started, open you up to ideas and details that you might not have previously been cognizant of, add to the realism, but we don't want them to handcuff us, right? So utilize them in ways that are comfortable to you. And also feel free to make it your own. Let's get a bit closer. So once we have that applied and dried, we're going to make a slightly brighter variant by just interjecting some titanium white. And this is where we make our buildings distinct. This larger one to the right, I'm going to use a lot of lighter gray on that. And then I think this one to the left will do so, but only a little bit because we're going to have another building right in front of it and under it. So you can see that there's a space in between these two. And then we have another implied building right there. We have applied one right behind it. So there's a lot going on. We're also going to use this to kind of create the highlighted portion of a roof underneath. And then we're going to have a larger building right through here as well which has more light. So very quickly, we built a lot of layers. And from there, we're going to keep adding detail by switching to our, you know what? Let's go to our smaller flat headed brush. Let's mix up an even brighter variant because you want a range of grays we don't want them all to be the same. And with this, let's create, just making sure you can see, let's create a line through the middle of this one. Very good. Let's create a couple smaller ones at the bottom. I'm just going off of the reference photo. One on the other side of the building. So we have them essentially on both sides and then here's the back of the building and we can do a different design through there. Make it nice and unique. We can also create something a bit more unique through here. Let it get darker as you move down. And One more little detail through there and there. So nice and easy, didn't take a lot of work. Let's also, while we let that dry before we add in our lights, go back to the larger flathead, mix up a dark blue that we can use to paint in this building, at least the base layer of it. And again, I'm not doing all of it at once so that we don't overwhelm ourselves with trying to figure things out. It doesn't get complicated or confusing. We still have an idea of which area we're in, what we're trying to accomplish in said area. Yep. 
It also gives us smaller goals. So we're constantly accomplishing things, right? Reminding ourselves that, oh, you know what, this is fun. I, I can do it. I'm doing well. It's important to set those small goals in general. And of course, we have our big goals in the form of the painting itself, the sky itself, the city itself, and the water itself. Let's go for a brighter mix. And I'm going to use this on the right hand side of the building because I think it's a bit brighter. Doesn't have to be dramatically so, but we should have somewhat of a harder line here. Now it's three dimensional. Nice and easy. And then we'll go with something a little bit darker. I'm realizing there's another little building in here that I want to put in, but it requires it needs to be the darkest, which means the other buildings need to be a little bit brighter. There we go. Now we go for the darker pigment. Which will go in front of this right here. So I'm just adding more Mars Black to my mix. And just like that we have another layer of buildings, of depth, of detail. It's subtle, but that's how we want it. Again, nice and easy. So, stepping back, I noticed that my buildings aren't all actually straight. It's okay, it's something I can fix a little bit later on. With the camera, it's difficult to kind of maneuver to the point where I can render those straight lines efficiently. So I might do that off camera a little bit, but it really is just looking at the painting and making those micro adjustments to edges. With that, we are going to reincorporate some lights using the Naples Yellow, Burnt Sienna, and Titanium White. However, we're going to incorporate an additional step after this. So we're going to add our lights and then we're going to be a bit playful with it. My lights I'm going to start by adding that which I see in the photo, simply because it's already aesthetic there, which means the translation will be aesthetic. And it gives us a good starting point, right? Some windows are bigger than others. When I want to make the windows bigger, I just apply slightly more pressure with my brush. That expands the bristles and renders a bigger marking, bigger window. So it's quite simple. And that'll all change and depend on the building itself, right? Now with this one, we have a lot of horizontal windows. So I'm not going in with just a tap, I'm going in with a tap and a drag. Trying to keep them fairly consistent, but again, I do like that painterly look. I do like when things are reminiscent of the medium and therefore slightly imperfect. We can also clean up edges quite easily in later portions. With that, Let's head over here. This building has a lot of lights in it. I'm going to go over them a couple of times just to make sure they're nice and opaque. Once you start establishing pattern, it gets fairly easy.
Again, I'm not trying to overdo it. In these first applications, we can always go back and add more windows. It's not hard. Right now, the real goal is some level of restraint. It's adding enough, but not too much. Though, we are working with acrylics, and the beauty of acrylic paints isn't their dry time, which can be great, it's very efficient, but I think the real beauty of acrylics is just how forgiving and malleable the medium is. If you don't like something, it's okay. You just let it dry. Five minutes out later, you go back in, you paint over it. So, don't worry too, too much. This building, the reference photo has fairly similar windows to the building behind, but I don't want it to be too similar, so I'm going to take an artistic liberty, change these up a little bit, render something a bit more unique. Now we'll get a little bit closer and we'll grab. Hello, <laughs> getting quite close there. A new pigment, that being a cadmium yellow. This one's a medium hue. You could also go with a lighter hue or a deep hue. The deep hue will just be a bit warmer. And right now I'm looking for the yellows that are fairly bright and vibrant, something a bit more saturated. Naples yellow, very opaque, great for layering over darker pigments, but also doesn't have that much of a shine, as you can see, in relation. So we're going to grab some of our cadmium yellow. We'll mix that with our Naples yellow. We'll mix that with a titanium white, a little bit of our burnt sienna. And you can see just how much more vibrant that is in relation to our pre-existing mixes. We'll grab this. And there are going to be certain buildings, areas, that catch a little bit more light, that stand out in a unique way. And this is our opportunity to highlight those, all right? So here we're essentially picking our favorite buildings or even favorite windows. Here, I'm not going to do all of the windows. We're going to assume that there are just different light bulbs, different types of light within the buildings in different areas, right? Maybe some are fluorescent, others aren't. We can also make a much more white heavy mix. Very bright. Might add brand new unique lights at this point. And the variation of different yellows within these is important. Going over areas multiple times. Again, expanding on the areas in which we've applied. Because now we see how many lights as a whole there are in this area of the painting. We have that opportunity to expand. We were patient and now it's paying off. This building is quite eclectic in terms of the colors and the lights. But you can see that it does have a pretty dramatic impact. I think the painting looks a lot better already. And we'll do a lot more of this later on. But for now, I think this is a good start. Okay, now move to a very exciting portion of this. It starts by mixing a dark, but not too dark, bluish base. And you see all of this area in the backdrop. We're going to block that in because while what I'm about to block in is fairly large, it's also defined largely 
by the top portions of the structure so I can fill in a good area while still being very aware of the architecture and the windows. See, just like this. And then we apply more pressure in the middle to expand the bristles. Get that nice thick application. I'm not too worried about the drawing and the outlines. I can always just take off that drawing with a little bit of water. It's done with Conte, it's like a chalk. Comes off quite easily. We use a white charcoal as well. And I think I'm going to switch over to the smaller flat headed brush to get the tops. These very sharp defining portions of the structure. Nice and easy. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Now let's uh, let's move in. Let it dry. Add some detail. Okay. So now we're going to make that mix that we used right there a little bit brighter for our next couple of applications. We'll also be applying it with the smaller flat headed brush because we want a little bit more detail. Make sure that brush is nice and damp. Then this right here I think is a building that's a little bit farther away. It's a bit in the distance and you know what? You can already tell that mixture while brighter, not quite bright enough. So I'll interject more of that titanium white. We'll make it cool again, cerulean blue, just like so. Friendly reminder that we don't have to go with the first pigment we mix. Grab more of that. And that's perfect. Nice and bright in comparison to that which we had. We're going to go down about halfway. We're going to go in. And then we're going to go down again. This is interesting. This makes it look like this building kind of has this little L shape right there. We're also going to brighten this background building through here, just like that. Again, nice and easy. Let's go with something slightly darker, not too, too much, but a little bit darker. Still want it to be a highlight. And we'll create some planes for, say, the front of this building, because we're going to have portions that And go down back way, and we can see the sides. We're also going to have areas that kind of protrude. So we'll just do the implication of those. Very simple this time. Now we're switching back to the small liner brush, we're mixing up a nice yellow warmer version. So we have some extra burnt sienna in there. Then we can start applying unique windows. We have a couple horizontal ones in this far building over on the left, another one towards the top, and then the ones through here become a bit more streamlined. And it's fairly easy to note based just on the fact that The building itself has so much easily distinguishable structure. Again, I'm skipping areas because we are going to have some of the lights off. That's important. The windows are going to change slightly as we move to a different plane. Just like so. Try not to uh, <laughs> bump your canvas there. 
Now we'll move over here. Go back to maybe more of a more of a square window. And that just means applying slightly more pressure with the brush. Trying to be playful with my assortment. Occasionally taking a glance over at the reference, but also just taking a lot of artistic liberties and feeling it out. If we don't like it, how many windows do we have? It's an easy fix. As we can always just go and repaint that base layer. These lighter pigments aren't hard to cover, so it wouldn't be tricky. With that, I'm going to move over yet again. And I don't see any lights actually in this building in the photo, but I'm going to create some horizontal ones. Again, trying to create some diversity. Very good. And now we're back to the more relaxed step, which is a block in of a darker hue. So some of this pigment's still wet, which is great. It means we get to continue to work with that pigment. And for this one, we're going to work the edges first, right? As that's easiest when we have fresh pigment. Rotating my hand to attempt to get the cleanest possible marking. We're going to have a dome-like shape here, building, but I'm not going to integrate that just yet because it's a much lighter hue, much lighter value, and it'll just be easier to apply over that slightly less dark pigment that we already have down. So now we'll just fill this in. Once it becomes difficult to apply the sharper markings, switch on over to our smaller flathead. And by the way, if you're watching this and you're looking at your brushes, wondering which ones are similar, you can get the exact brushes that I'm using in the video description. It's a brush set which we made here for the channel specifically for all of the acrylic lessons that we do. That way you just have to pick up that one set and you never have to worry about getting additional brushes for these acrylic lessons. That's everything we use. Deciding to block in slightly more than we normally do just because it's not really that large of an area and it's fairly separated as well so it's not like we're overly complicating the situation. Just make sure you have a nice thick layer and once you do, once it dries, you can move on to building it out. Okay, now we have a lot going on here, so we're going to simplify the painting, the image, just a little bit as we continue to do. But I'm going to start by rendering a good amount of a lighter blue, just like this. And I'm going to use it on this building right here. Work that all the way down there. We'll have another building on top of it, or rather in front of it. We also have these two little buildings behind, so we're creating a lot of depth through our layers there. I think we'll also head over here 
we'll create the top of another building with the same pigment just like so extend it out a little bit drag it down nice and easy it's good maybe we have just a corner of another one through there and then I think we'll just do a small bit right through here so you have a good collection of them now let's go a little bit brighter add additional titanium white and I'm going to tap in actually you know what no better idea let's go a little bit darker a little bit more blue we're going to re-interject a bit of shadow this is just a design in the building all of the lighter gray will be protruding pieces all of the darker gray will be the inset areas that aren't receiving light it's kind of creating extra depth making the building a bit more unique all right always aiming to do that and hopefully this pigment is a little bit brighter than that which we used for the actual background I don't want it to be that much brighter though and we can make a slightly different building and color value through here you can do that with the front of this building so now we have this wide range of very dark pigments just like that okay now I think I'll actually switch to the liner and as noted there's this really neat dome towards the bottom area a lot of that titanium white now this looks quite bright right now that's because it is relatively but once we properly incorporate the lights and brighten these it'll make a lot more sense usually within the setting and also a bit of that highlight through here make a bit of a brighter building in the back really diversifying our values in this section we can even head over here and there are a couple of spots where it could work let's uh, interject this detail it's interesting let's maybe this isn't in the reference photo but we can just add the top of this create some separation between it and the building behind it it's a nice aesthetic and then it'll carry forward onto the other side nice and easy and just interject these little pieces that don't take a lot of work but do add a lot to the painting you can see it's so quick as well now we can throw in additional unique designs and should there be more unique buildings with it as well see now we have just these implication of roofs and that creates this extra layer of buildings and depth let's also just make this mixture slightly brighter add a little bit of highlight to the top do a bit of a blend down now it looks like there's a gradient it's a bit more three-dimensional I like that and now everything's dry 
we are back and we are remixing some of our yellows. I'm going to do quite a bit of this because we do have a rather large amount to apply. And again, we want our first mix to be a bit more on the orange side than the yellow side. I'm going to take all that extra pigment off of my brush. And we'll start on the very easily distinguishable ones. I think this building will have a lot of them. We're just painting it in the gray portion, not in the darker area that we also applied. You can see I'm Rarely, but occasionally, skipping areas. We'll double down on a couple that need to be a bit bigger. And we're almost there. So, good set, windows, let me, okay, good, you could see that. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just not sure. Now let's go with something that's a bit more square, maybe a bit bigger, through here. The occasional skip. Like so, grab a bit more, I am deviating from the reference photo at this point in terms of what I'm adding these windows to, and I'm doing that predominantly for diversity's sake, I am here doing more of a square window, as you can see. So I'm pressing a little bit harder with the brush, doing a bit of a drag downwards, skipping occasional spots, I like that. Okay. Let's go with some tiny ones in the distance. Remember, the farther away it is, just because of perspective, the smaller it will look. This is an interesting one. We'll have some horizontal windows for the most part. trying to build our diversity. And then I'll also take this pigment and I'll randomly select some of the windows in the back here that only have a singular layer and then therefore are semi-transparent and therefore are a bit darker as they have that other pigment, that darker base layer showing through. I think we're really getting somewhere. Interestingly, when you think about it, depending upon the windows, you can kind of tell what type of building it is. If it's uh, apartments or condos, there'll likely be more randomized lighting. Different people have gone to bed or they're out or you know, they're just in different rooms. But if it's an office building will have all of the lights on. 
or at least large sections. There we go. It's worth noting that these aren't all perfect. That's okay. I think we'll have a lot of light in one of these bottom buildings. But we'll further define that a little bit later. There we go. Yet again, we're back to the larger flathead. We're back to some cerulean blue. Titanium white and a base layer. For this, I'm going to start by not doing the entirety of the building. I'm only going to do this bottom section because this is our main subject. This is where the attention lands ultimately, right? So it needs as much care as we can give it. And we'll just do a much better job as a whole if we compartmentalize even more. We also have a lot of smaller buildings in front of it. So we're going to try our best to honor those, give them the attention they deserve. Now I can tell that this layer right here is a little bit thin. I'll definitely need to go back do a second once it's dry, and that's okay. It's a part of the process. Okay, and now we take that step back, and what do we do? We start rendering a brighter version of that base pigment. We figure out the areas that we want to be brighter, just via the amount of light they're getting and the material in which these areas are constructed of. We will continue this guy into here. It's kind of interesting. And I don't know that we need to do too much, to be honest. I have a protruding area that comes in through here going to simplify the reference photo. There we go. From there, let's switch on over to the smaller flathead. Go to slightly brighter. And we'll interject some details. Make this spot slightly more unique. We can have it be a little bit brighter, a little bit more high contrast than we have other areas because we are in the middle of the painting. We want to draw the eye here anyway. Trying to paint so that my hand isn't in the way. Hopefully we're accomplishing that. can do. I'm trying to decide what I want to do. See little squares underneath in the reference photo. We can do that. I think having this shape similar to a window but not in the yellowish orange would be a good addition. Repetition wise it fits with the painting but it creates something slightly new. It's beneficial. 
And from here, I think we'll just go slightly brighter for this essentially band of building. Not much, but just a little bit. Helps us to find edges, create multiple sections, and let's add some light. All right, so back to our windows. We already know the three hues we're going to use in addition to our titanium white. We know that it's going to be a more orange heavy base. And we're going to have a lot of squared windows through there. And I think to ensure that we don't overdo that aesthetic, we're going to lean into more of these vertical windows that are very much akin to this movement. But of course, because it's a different value in hue, it'll not feel like too much of that particular application style. Now, we also need windows in here. This is far enough away from that that we can Go back to more of that blocky look for the windows. And I think something that I'm doing because I'm painting very diagonally, <laughs> I keep leaning a lot of the windows down this way, try to make sure that they are somewhat level when you're doing this. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Grab a bit more. You can see I kind of threw in two additional little buildings through here. Just different values, nothing complicated. Vertical windows, but they're not tight. They're very far apart. Have a little lights towards the bottom, maybe openings for doors. We can throw those really throughout here quite successfully. Then maybe there's a space here that's void, it's just wall. We can start the light a little bit farther down. Singular little window right through there. It's interesting. Good. And now we get to have a lot of fun. We're moving up in the canvas. We're remixing that dark base layer. And we are finally working on the most eye-catching piece of our painting. Our main subject, we want to be very careful with how we paint this. A bit of a rounded portion up here. So just use the corner to do so. There we go. And while a lot of this is going to be very bright, I am intentionally Painting a darker base layer first. We'll build the light on top. Yet to paint the other side, but that's okay. I essentially ran out of watery pigment, which would let me render those sharp markings. So rather than trying to force it, we're just going to take that step back, do what we can with the remainder of the pigment and then we'll go back in for the other side. So I'll make my brush damp, grab some paint. I'm gonna put my palette down actually. This is a strange way of painting, I know, but because the camera is where it is, I can't paint normally. 
on this side. There we go. This is thin, you don't need a second layer, but we have that sharp edge that we wanted. much easier to expand this pigment than it is to reel it in so if you're going to err, err on the side of caution and paint slightly less expand slightly less than you think you should or you need to there we go Okay, now from here, it's a new night. We are remixing our pigments to render a nice, warm, orange heavy, or at least burnt sienna heavy, yellow, good amount of titanium white to thicken it. And of course, for our lights, we are going to be switching to our small liner brush. I've drawn in a lot of little details here into the tower to indicate where our lights are. And I'm just going to do my best to apply a lot of little details into the space. This mixture, again, wall thick with a titanium white it is actually pretty thin because of the abundance of water that I'm using and that's actually nice it's going to give me an opportunity to craft this over time Make it what we really want it to be. So right here we have three little arched areas. And I'm going to put a line or two going through it. Making it a bit more interesting. As we head down, we're going to continue with those elongated markings. These are going to be fairly straight. Though, again, I do like my paintings to be a bit more painterly. So they're going to have imperfections, and that's okay. Easy fix to getting it perfect is just using the painter's tape. Or painting along a sharp edge, like that of a ruler. There we go. I'm also going to add some extra light towards the bottom and just softly bring that up with water. That way it looks like this bottom ledge area is lit and it's emanating light which finds its way up the painting. Okay, let's get you a bit closer. Now I am going to integrate a bit more structure into the windows through here. And through a very easy way, I'm just going to take that larger flat headed brush. I'm going to make a lot of horizontal markings, which will eventually be representative of windows. We will be separating them. Going in with a tap, sometimes a little bit of a drag just to get all areas nice and sharp. We'll grab more paint, head on over to the other side which is on a slight bit of an angle. Going to work to meet all of those other horizontal markings. This is just the easiest way to get massive amount of 
little windows quickly and fairly straight with each other. Do that, good. Now we'll go back to the color that we actually used for the building. And we're going to work our way down. And you know what? I can tell right now that I need to wait for the yellow to dry because this is just going to mix and render a brighter pigment than we want. So we'll take a we'll take a two minute break. Actually, you know what? While we wait, we might as well go back to the liner brush and clean up a lot of the applications that we have up here. You can see very quickly that the second application makes a big difference with the light. And this is a good general rule for all light sources, especially when painting them on a darker backing. Additional layers make all of the difference. And if you leave a little bit of the edge showing from past layers, it look like you get a little bit of a glow effect, which is really nice. There we go. Let's grab some more. Highlighting a lot of edges here, not intentionally, or at least not with the intent to just highlight edges. We're not trying to draw the shape with paint. We never try to do that, but there's a lot of light highlighting our edges, so it's important that we give them the pigment and the opaque application that we do. Add extra light to the bottom. Work it upwards a little bit. Every time we work it upwards, if we're taking from the bottom, we are thinning the bottom, which means inevitably we'll have to go back and re-thicken it, but that's okay. It's always easy to add more paint. And you can see that this is getting a bit messy. We'll just grab a hint of what we used to actually render the larger space, the larger building. We'll start reincorporating that. Okay, so I think this area has had enough time to dry. And means we can go in, can make our dividing lines. All of these little squares. And we'll just randomly take out some of them We'll typically opt for the imperfect ones anyway, because there will be imperfect ones. There will be rows that are a little off, and those would be great to kind of remove, right? Okay, now we'll switch. Again, apologies if my hand's in the way through any of that. This is just a, it's a bit of a more tricky area, right? Now we're going back in. We're making areas a bit darker, a bit more distinct. Like so. Continue through there. And 
Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. We can also reinstigate some of this into the top just to regrant form should we feel we need it. And already I think we're making a big difference. There we go. All right, now, taking a step back, everything's dry. I did take some time to straighten a couple of the windows that are here, and I did that by just taking this larger flat-headed brush and creating sharper lines around them, just kind of crafting them in a little bit and giving it a bit more direction. That said, that did lessen the amount of windows that I had, and I do want to make some of them brighter. So we're going to go in with a couple of pigments. Here we have a nice yellowish orange. Let's also grab an abundance of titanium white, and a little bit of our cad yellow into that, a little bit of our Naples yellow, but predominantly I do want this to be a titanium white mixture. You can have different variants of it too, right? It doesn't all have to be the exact same. So let's apply those with our little liner brush. I'm going to start with the brightest pigment that I have. I'm going to start that right at the base here of the light in our tower. And this is really going to give it a glow. I'm going to work it about halfway up these strands of light. Then we'll also do a little bit up here. This is going to be the real primary subject of our painting. So we want it to be the brightest the highest contrast, the most noticeable. That's simply done through building our lights, keeping our darks dark. Go over this a couple of times as it begins to dry. Already much better. Now let's take that same pigment I'm not going to do this in every window, but we are going to drop this highlight in a number of these. More so on the front facing side of the building than the side. Trying to keep them somewhat nice and square. We have a lot of great square windows because of how we applied the pigment this time. bit more. There we go. Looking very clean, very bright. Now we can expand. We really wanted to gauge what that would look like first. That way we wouldn't make any other area too bright in comparison. We can start applying light to the surrounding buildings. Not too much, but hints. Here we go. Maybe we could do just a couple more over here. And I think we'll also Grab some of our orange to further diversify. It all adds up, right? Makes for a much more unique painting.
All right, now we get to move to a fun step, and that's blocking in the water, covering the remainder of the canvas. We can go back and touch up the buildings and all of that later, but I do just have a little piece of a green tape here to help me get a straight line. Going back in with the one inch flat headed brush, we're going to mix a grand abundance of a grayish dark blue, one that is akin to that what we have in the clouds, but a little bit darker. So mix this up. We'll do a little test on the side of our canvas, see how close we are. It's actually quite close to the actual <laughs> clouds, which is great. Just means we need to be a little bit darker. And as I interject that Mars black, I also re-interject a little bit of our cerulean blue because the Mars black is going to desaturate our mixture. I'm just trying to keep it nice and blue through this process. I'm going to do another test on the side of the canvas, another test on this side. Perfect. It's darker. I think this is it. And if it's not, it's okay. We can always go in again with a new layer. And that's it. We'll apply a bit of pressure with our brush. That's going to expand the bristles, get us a larger application as a whole. Not really using much water here because I don't want to thicken, or rather thin the paint. I want to keep it nice and thick. And much like everything else, two layers, often better than one. There we go. Nice and easy. From there, we can either wait for this to dry and then start applying our details, or we can just jump ahead and do so now, wet into wet. If we do it wet into wet, we accept that part of it will dry as we go, and then we'll be start working wet into dry, so our application will change a little bit. So I only really recommend that if you're comfortable with that idea, but I think that's the right color of blue, and I like it. I'm I'm going to take a step back. I'm really going to look at it. I think, despite not using a lot of water, I think it's a little bit thin on the canvas. I think a second layer would do it a lot of good. So I'm actually going to let it dry. I'll go back in, I'll do a second layer, and then we'll, uh, we'll proceed from there. Okay, so once that's dry, we're just going to render a slightly darker variant of that blue. Mix it up with our larger flattened brush, and we'll switch on over to our smaller liner. Then, we're not going to go all the way to the back, we're going to skip down about a third of an inch, and I'm going to start tapping a lot of minute little dots, movement. Sometimes there's a bit of a movement in the brush, sometimes it moves a bit horizontally to offer us the idea of motion in the water, but these are essentially little portions that are shadows of water that moves up, doesn't catch light, and then moves back down on the other side. That said, I'll get you uh, quite a bit closer. So, yet again, going in, lots of little taps. My mix is very watery, and I have it that way because I want incredibly small sh markings. And I want semi-transparent applications because I don't want it to be too stark. And if we have semi-transparent applications, then we're essentially starting in a bit of a safer place. We can double down on them. We can make them darker. We can go back. We can do so much more with the layers. So we're just setting ourselves up to succeed with that extra bit of water for multiple reasons. You can see I'm not going too far down with this either. There's essentially going to be patches of water, just because of how perspective works and light, where you have all of this detail and then you don't. And you have detail and then you don't. This is just one of those areas that does have the detail. 
the area above it and below will also have markings like this, but they'll be lighter. It'll be the light reflecting its way onto the water. Some stark, some not. We'll have that beautiful golden glow pigment through portions, but we'll also just have brighter water. You can see some areas that are too watery, too thin, just end up drying. You can't really see them on the canvas. And that's okay. I'll just go back over it again with a slightly less watery mix, and that builds some beautiful texture. It's actually a, it's actually a great thing. It takes longer, but it makes for beautiful painting. And that's what we're here to do, right? You gotta make something we're proud of. So if it takes, it takes a couple extra layers, it's definitely worth it. You can see that I'm going back and filling in empty spots in second and third applications. Now we'll take that step back, we'll grab a bit more pigment. We're going to skip about double this amount of space. So I'm going to go down to here. And we're going to start doing the same thing. It's lots of little taps, however, the closer we get to us, the more we're going to create elongated horizontal markings. I think these are important to start showing scale to the water. It's going to give us depth because as subjects get closer to us, we can see more of their details, they look bigger. And that's what's happening here with the water. We're getting closer to it, it's looking bigger. And that variance with what we have in the background will be great. to give this scale. And you can see that I'm slowly moving my way, not only left and right, but down. Again, because it's a, a new area, we'll get, we'll get closer. Okay, so here we go, yet again. And my mix this time is a little bit less water heavy than what I had before, and intentionally so because I'm not looking to make as transparent of markings this close. And I'm also looking for them to be a little bit bigger. So you can see that the marks are expanding. We're actually going to move this closer and closer to us. So it doesn't really matter if I do the left and the right hand side fully first, or if I move downwards, as long as we are scaling appropriately, it's fine. Speaking of scaling appropriately, because I am now choosing to move downwards, I am making longer strokes. And they'll get smaller as we get higher. And there'll be that transition. It's not like we go from a tap, a, a slight drag to a full drag. There's a progression. We keep it subtle. Also, don't worry, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't just what the water looks like. We have a lot of layers to go. We have quite a few steps to build, real highlight and depth. This is just building the foundation still. So if it looks awkward or messy or unfinished, it's because it is unfinished and it should look a little awkward and messy and that's okay. That's just a part of painting. If anything, I think it helps build our skills with patience and resolve in general. Get better at looking at the big picture, where we want to go rather than where we are. Having that vision, trusting us, ourselves, to kind of carry that out. 
which is a lot of great lessons outside of art. Getting quite close to us, so the markings are going to get very much elongated, stark. And back to the sides, where it's a whole lot of things, depending upon how far away we are from the canvas, right? All right, and now we're just going to head over here to the left side of the painting. And again, it doesn't really matter which area you start with or how you move through it because you're just creating these patterns and it is a fairly simple rule. Again, I'm just getting smaller in the background. However, I do kind of like breaking it up into sections. That way I have these continuous feelings of success. You know, we set a little milestone, a little goal, we have an area, we accomplish it, we feel good. That motivates us to go and move on to the next one. And that's really how I'm kind of prioritizing this area. And now that we get to this middle portion, we move to more of those horizontal strokes. Brush is getting pretty watery. I have most of the pigment off. So this would be quite transparent as it dries. But that's not an issue because we'll just go over it again. We'll build those layers. We'll make it nice and detailed. It'll add great depth. Now we'll create that kind of connective tissue between the areas we've been working in. If the edges are a little bit less stark or less detailed, that also isn't a bad thing because you want to draw the eye in towards the center of the painting. And if we just have more detail, more contrast in the center, as opposed to the edges, the eye will go there and stay there to a greater degree. So it's one of those things where we don't want that much detail everywhere. We don't want that much contrast everywhere. We want to prioritize where it's going. And that does mean simplifying areas that could look quote unquote better, right? They could look more full. They could look more detailed. Words that we typically associate with the good when it comes to art, but simplicity and restraint, are very important. That's something that I definitely struggled with in my first couple of years of painting, but we got there, figured it out. And, you know, we still figure it out day by day, painting by painting can always be a little bit better, which is fun. Keeps it motivating. Love that idea of continuous opportunity for growth. And that's just something that painting does and will always offer us. So here we'll just go over these spots a couple of times, build them up, and we'll take a couple of steps back and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so we have a great base in there. Start adding some highlights, and we're going to do this by rendering a pigment that's essentially akin to what we have in the sky. We want it to be just a bit darker because often the light that reflects from the sky into the water ends up being just a bit darker. We'll do a little test on the side of our canvas, and it's extremely close. We'll interject some extra Mars black in there. Do another little test. And I think we're almost there. We'll mix a bit more of it. That way we can keep painting for a good period of time. Remember, we don't just go with the first color we mix. We mix until we get what we actually want. And we're pretty close. Okay, I think this is it. Brilliant. Okay. I'll we'll switch on over to our liner brush, make sure it's nice and damp. And with this, 
we're going to go do little taps in the distance in between the darker pigments we already painted in and here again if there does need to be a drag it is horizontal but so far away that we really don't want to do much of that so for the sake of compartmentalizing we can either go all the way across or what I think we'll do just to liven it up we're going to go down slightly into this negative space which didn't have a pattern or texture beforehand and we're going to start giving it one should show up a bit better here we continue moving that down, we continue moving that forward we'll also take this as it starts to get pretty watery and I'll do those same taps towards the very top but it gets ambiguous, you can't really see them and that's kind of the point because this is so far away that you won't really see that detail you just get a hint, a glimmer of it so I'm only doing this when I have next to no paint on my brush and it's just a very watery mix that said, we're not done we're far from done with this area. We're still moving this down. A series of taps. Very soon, an incorporation of horizontal strokes. We are still actively working to avoid those darker markings like we did in this top strip. And I know this is a lot of applications taken some real time. There are easier ways to paint water that take significantly less attention to detail, but I do think this is really one of the best ways to get the most impressive results, most realistic results. If you're willing to put in that time and get something great, Okay, so, getting a little bit farther down. I know that you're quite far away, the camera is. It's intentional, just so you can see from a bit of a distance the progression of the water. As soon as we're done this little strip here, I'll move you closer, and then you can see more of the actual brush stroke, but I think it's just so important that we see the scaling of these applications, how it's all kind of from and afar coming together because again what you see right now is much more akin to what someone will see of the painting not when they're inches away you often just don't get inches away from paintings unless you know, we're artists and <laughs> we want to see all of the brush strokes and how it came together. Definitely one of those people who, there's a museum exhibit, a painting exhibit, and it's, you know, recommended that you take two hours out of your day to do it. I'll probably take five because I just really want to live in that setting and absorb as much information as I can. I just think it's always inspiring. But again, that's not, that's not most people, and that's okay. It just means that we need to make sure that our paintings look good from a distance, because that's typically where they're seen from. As this dries, you can see that it gets a little bit darker, that's fine. It just means we can go back in later with another layer and make it brighter, build on it. There we go. Okay, and here we are, a bit closer again in the foreground, much like those darker markings. We have horizontal strokes which work in and around those darker applications, and then as you get up, 
they get smaller, but they're still horizontal strokes. And then provided we don't run out of pigment, which is what is happening right now, we move into more of a tap. So I'll just grab some extra paint with a damp brush. And sometimes we just don't grab enough, so we go back. We don't have any of the dark markings up here, so we can move more freely, more quickly. We're not trying to dodge any areas. But once we have next to nothing on our brush, we can move up into here. And then loosely apply it through there. If you have an area that you don't love, it's okay. You can always go back with this base color and layer reapply that and then continue add a lot of water to this mixture didn't really intend to but it will give me those sharp movements which I will need to work around the details of the foreground The vast majority of these markings are horizontal for the most part, however, they do occasionally have little dips and diagonal movements. On the rarest of occasions, they'll also connect with each other, and that can always be fun visually. And this will really get special once we start adding the reflections from the lights. We build highlights in the blues. We're still just layering out foundations. There's a lot of that with acrylic painting. And it's great because it gives you all these essentially practice rounds where you get to get to know the setting and your medium, your application style, if you like your colors. And then you, you double down on what's really working, what you love. This looks quite bright, but it really is just because it's wet. These markings are a little bit too large. It's okay because it is so wet, I don't think it'll dry dominantly. But this is just your friendly reminder to try to keep them a little bit smaller than that up here. Our hands get into the practice of making those elongated markings towards the bottom, and sometimes you can bring those practices up subconsciously. Something we want to avoid for the most part, but again, we can fix it, we can work around it. It's nothing to worry about. Now, yet again, we'll just take that step back, make sure that it's all coming together. And I will remind you should always be taking steps back from the canvas, that way we can see it holistically. It ties into everything we've been saying. But you can do that too. Grabbing water in between each application, just to make sure these bristles are nice and sharp, condensed. Again, if you want to work with the same Extremely fine brush that I'm using for this detail. You can get it out of my brush set, which is in the video description. It's a five piece brush set. Use it for all of the acrylic lessons here on this channel. So you get it once, then you have everything you need. I think there might only be about a hundred left in stock. So if you want it, friendly reminder. Okay, it's looking great. It's time to build some depth though. We'll do that by taking the pigment we already have, making it brighter, not substantially, <laughs> Not like that, but you, you can see I'm leaving a bit of it off to the side, that way I have a 
reference point. There we go. We're close. Adding some extra Mars black just to make it slightly darker, and this is perfect. Also, this is a mix that doesn't have to be perfectly mixed. Having some variance in there can also be nice. We just want to make sure that the values remain the same. And this isn't actually us painting in light from the reflections or anything like that. This is us just doubling down on the areas we like, making them pop a little bit more. You don't have to do this everywhere. I'm going to do it predominantly towards the center area of the canvas, just to keep the eye in the middle. And I'll have it dissipate as you move out towards the edges, but it's a quick, easy way of making your water have some real pop to it. We don't want too much pop <laughs> because we don't want to take away from the actual city, right? This is a, there's a lot of pattern, it's a lot of detail and it can quickly become visually overwhelming. So we're going to be careful of that, but we can do a bit of it. It can be beneficial, we just need to be careful and mindful of the amount we work in. But again, I'm staying very central to begin with. So many little spots you can add it to. So you can take liberties, make it your own however you like. I'm looking in the viewfinder of the camera, which makes it look a room away from me. And I think I'm finding that nice subtlety. It's not too bright, and I don't think if I didn't, I think if I didn't mention it, you probably wouldn't notice it, which is perfect. That's really what we're looking for, that level of subtlety. It's there, but you don't really think about it. It's not something you'd point out. Okay, now we have our base in there. Really like that. You can build those highlights more if you want. I'm very happy with it as is because we're moving on to the next set of our highlights and that is going to be the reflections from the light. So I'm grabbing a lot of my cadmium yellow, my Naples yellow, actually starting with about a 50-50 mix of the two. We are going to grab some of our titanium white and I'm trying to grab it void of the blue that's also over here in this mix. You might just want to get new pigment. And we're also interjecting some burnt sienna to render a nice warm orangey yellow. I know my hand's kind of in the way here, but I think you have an idea of what we're working towards. I'm going to switch on over to the liner brush. It's worth noting that I cleaned my water dish and my brushes, that way I don't get the blue mix in here. But we're going to take this and we're going to focus predominantly on this guy right here. In the distance, I'm going to do a lot of little taps along the edge of the water. And I'll tell you right now, the biggest mistake I used to make when I was doing this was I would put too much pressure on my brush and make my markings too big. And we think like, oh, you know, it'll, it'll look good. And it always looks it always looks good, but it can look a lot better when our markings are extremely small, very sharp. You can build them out to be bigger, but I feel like I've done this technique, this type of thing, a hundred times, and almost every time I do it, I always say, you know what, I wish I wish there was just a little, <laughs> a little bit more little. So really focus on that. Notice here, we had this darker strip, and then we had this darker area down here. We're going to dodge this top darker strip. I'll get you a bit closer. 
Okay, so we've established where we're putting these. Again, very wet brush. We have a lot of burnt sienna in this because we're applying this over blue. And if I applied a very yellow heavy mix, we get a real green. We have a little bit of green, but it's a lot less than what we would have if we didn't go in with all of that burnt sienna. So I really like what we're getting here. A lot of dense, close markings in the middle, and then get a bit more space as you move towards the left and right. Just uh, kind of dancing along the water, trying to aim for the most part over areas that are already a bit brighter. We're not trying to go over the darker shadows. There we go. And then I'm just bringing it down. We know where to put it because we've already incorporated those highlights once, if not twice, if not three times. And much like all of the blue applications, in the back it's a tap, in the front it's a tap and a drag, if not a drag. And I am starting to use less and less water, not because I want larger applications, I don't really, I still want them to be really sharp, but I want them to be more opaque. I want some texture if I can get it because we get to see all of those details and that texture in the foreground in a way that we can't in the background, right? Still being careful because, as noted, whenever I do this, <laughs> I always feel like I wish I'd made smaller markings. I'm still being mindful of that commonality in past practices, but we're bringing it together. Okay, that was a big marking, we're going to be careful. Good, okay. Like that. Something I do try to do is, as I paint, talk to myself, talk to you about what I do and I don't like about my process. It keeps me cognizant of the techniques I'm using, if they're working, if they're not. That way I know if I should double down on them or try something a little bit different. And I know at first it can feel a little awkward, you're giving yourself compliments or you're saying you don't really like something you're doing, but pretty soon it almost feels like a, sorry, really, <laughs> really focusing there. Pretty soon it just feels like a common exercise, which you will find does get your paintings to a better, stronger place. Still going to do a couple taps in the foreground, especially towards the tops of and the center points of some of these moving wave. Just give it that shine, that gleam, that shimmer. Okay, now we have a good base. So let's grab a lot more of that titanium white. Makes about an equal amount of our Naples yellow hint of our CAD yellow to re-interject some saturation. This time we don't really need the burnt sienna because we already have a good base established on the canvas. Switch back to the liner brush. And we can use some extra water this time because, again, we do have a base. And this is where we'll double down on all of the details we really loved. We'll start to connect 
more of these. Do little inklings of light to the left and right, like that. It's a lot of fun, actually. And also note, again, as we kind of come to the end of the painting here, that I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had fun. I always like to give a little keyword that you can use in the comments. You can interject it into a sentence or just type the word itself, but it's essentially a little badge of honor to know that you are part of the, on average, 13% and make it to the end of these videos. And today, today we need to select a good word. Something that's not too obvious, but let's go with city lights. It's not one word, it's a couple, but if you type that in the comments in one way or another, we'll know that you made it all the way here. And I really respect that. I think it's the people who make it to the end of these who often end up with the, with the best words. But I hope you feel like you've learned a lot. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you feel ready to create something that you can hang and love. Maybe you make it for somebody else who really loves the city. I think making something for somebody is always, it's always the best kind of gift. All that time, love, and care. I know that's my favorite thing to, to receive. My mom made me this adorable Christmas sweater this year. And I don't know. It's kind of the best. But when I was growing up, my dad would make different things out of wood. Chests for painting supplies and whatnot that I still have. I hope, hope that people feel the same way about the paintings I make, you know? That said, if you'd like help making these paintings, you can find the traceables for them up over on Patreon. So you get the, the same drawing that I used to begin with. You can print it out, you can use tracing paper, you can use a mini projector, you can transfer that to the canvas so that the perspective and you get all the buildings just right. Don't have to worry about the drawing or the detail. Up there you can also find things like extra reference photos, bonus lessons. There are over a hundred bonus lessons that you can't find here on YouTube. Some of them are on big 24 by 36 inch canvases. So if you want to paint big, that's an option there too. You can also get all of my eBooks, which include acrylics for beginners, which is essentially the essentials. Everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into your first. We talk about composition, different color palettes, how to work with our brushes and water, all of that good stuff. There are also a bunch of ebooks full of additional traceables. And you can access to our Facebook group where everybody shares their renderings of these so you get different ideas and get feedback from the community. I pop in when I can. But it's pretty wonderful. Everybody up there, as always, big thank you to you for rendering such an incredible space that I am very proud of. Actually incredibly proud of this community as a whole. One of those things you take a second, you stop and you think about it and you say, yeah, very lucky, very blessed there. So again, if you're interested, all of that's up there, it's in the description, where you can also find the brush set, where you can also find different socials and whatnot. Always just a hub of different things. Also, I type out all of the materials, like all of the paints, down there too. All of the colors. It's 
It's not in the... It's not in the... Painting reference photo, but I kind of like the idea of interjecting just a little bit of light back here from the windows that are really close. So we're taking an artistic liberty. Yeah, I'm not doing much of it, but just a hint. I think that actually looks really nice. And we can also take this opportunity, if we want to, to interject additional windows down to the bottom. I think this will actually make a big difference. I think it already is. Makes it look like we have a lot of lamp posts or buildings or vehicles. It's so far away that it's ambiguous, but just having them all so close to the ground here opens up the imagination to so many other things that aren't just more buildings. Right? Then we can do some that are slightly higher. Go back down here. Rebuild highlight towards the center. I love that. We do have a bit of green, but it's a beautiful green. We have the right mix, right mix of pigments. It's hard to put down the brush, as always, because we just find different areas to add and build and make it better. If we overdo an area, we can always walk it back. But I am working on each piece of it in a subtle way, not overdoing any of it, not initially, We're taking it slow, it's paying off. There we go. So with that, I think that's our painting, I think that's our lesson. I hope you had a lot of fun. <laughs> Again, I hope you're inspired. I hope you're excited. This one I've been working on for a couple of weeks. And I just kind of bounced back and forth between it and other paintings. But I love it. I love that we took the time. Did it right. Didn't rush it. It's okay to take your time. And if you ever get stuck on a painting, it's okay. Just start another one and, you know that inspiration will strike again. You'll learn things. When you come back to it, you'll probably be even better at it. I feel like that happened with this, but yeah. I'll see you very soon with another lesson of this size here on this channel, because again, I've been working on things, but I'm excited. It's a great start of the year, and we're going to make a lot of art together. So again, above all, as always, you stay creative.